Hey everyone, welcome back to ITCPK. In the last few videos, we went through installing Android TV 13 on PC using a USB pin drive, setting it up, and even making it permanent. Many of you had great feedback, but also faced some common issues, like system not booting after permanent install, sound not working, Bluetooth not working, Wi-Fi missing, or apps not showing up. So in this video of our Android TV series, along with our main topic of permanent installation on PCs and laptops, I'll be sharing some fixes, tips, and answering the most frequently asked questions to help you get the best experience running Android TV on your PC. Let's get started. Android TV 13x86 is a custom build of Android TV designed to run on standard x86 PCs and laptops. Unlike the regular Android TV you find on smart TVs and streaming boxes, this version lets you bring the Android TV experience directly to your desktop or mini PC. With support for Google Play Store, apps, games, streaming services, and custom hardware, Android TV 13 transforms any computer into a smart entertainment hub. You can use it to watch YouTube videos, enjoy movies, play Android games, or even connect controllers for gaming. Even your existing keyboard and mouse works great, all from the comfort of your PC setup. I installed Android TV 13 permanently on my PC, and it works great. It is fast and responsive, performance is excellent. In this build of Android TV, I've already tested some of the most popular apps like YouTube, YouTube Kids, VLC Media Player, Kodi, Prime Video, Plex, Dailymotion, Spotify, and Jellyfin, and all of them are working smoothly without any issues. Now, some premium streaming apps like Netflix, Hulu, or Disney Plus may not show up in the Play Store on Android TV x86. But don't worry, you can still access them directly through any browser, and they work just fine for streaming. I also tried installing some popular Android games, and they're running really well. As you can see, games run surprisingly smooth on this Android TV 13 build. I've tested a few popular titles, and most of them work really well with just a regular keyboard and mouse. Of course, some games are designed for controllers, so if you connect a USB or Bluetooth gamepad, you'll get an even better experience. Keep in mind though, this build isn't meant for heavy gaming like high-end emulation or graphics-intensive titles, but for casual and light Android gaming, it performs great, especially on a decent PC setup. So if you enjoy games like puzzle, arcade, strategy, or even some mid-level action games, this setup should serve you really well. You can open any regular website using an internet browser and browse here from TCL works flawlessly on this build of Android TV. Before we begin, I want to give full credit to the original developers of this Android TV x86 project, Bruno and Tulio Domingos. Their hard work and dedication made it possible for us to enjoy Android TV on PC. I'll leave links to their website and YouTube channel in the description, so make sure to check them out and support their amazing work. The developer mentioned some hardware compatible with Android TV builds, you can check them out. Click one of the links to download Android TV 13 ISO. You may see ads or pop-up windows. Ignore them and click here to continue. Solve CAPTCHA and proceed to download the ISO file. After a bit of struggle, you will get the link. I will try to provide a direct link in the description, but I strongly encourage you to download from the developer's provided link to support their hard work. To set up partitions for Android TV 13, I'll be using Minitool Partition Wizard. It's a really simple and powerful tool for creating, resizing, or managing partitions. 
I personally find it much easier and powerful than Windows Disk Management. If you want to try it out, I'll leave a link in the description below. That's my affiliate link, so if you download or purchase through it, it also helps support this channel at no extra cost to you. I am going to install Android TV on this 60GB hard disk. You can also use an SSD for better speed and performance. The same method applies to portable external drives. Open Minitool Partition Wizard. Select Target Disk and delete any existing partitions. Now create a new partition. Set file system to FAT32. Set partition size to megabytes and resize it to 500. Set partition label to boot and click OK. Now create another partition. Set file system to XFAT and set label to ATV13, system, or whatever you like. Leave the partition size as is and click OK. Now both partitions are ready. Here you will notice all the changes are pending. Click apply to save changes. It's done. Here is an important step. Right-click on Boot Partition and click on Set Active. If you miss this step, the system will not boot. Again, click Apply to save changes. In the free version of Minitool Partition Wizard, all the basic features are available. If you want advanced features like Migrate OS to New Drive, Deleted Partition Recovery, Data Recovery, and much more, consider buying this powerful tool. Link is in the description. Now right-click on Android TV 13 ISO and mount it. Let's quickly verify our newly created partitions. Our boot partitions file system should be FAT32. And our second partitions file system should be XFAT. Now open Boot Partition. Now select and copy all files from the mounted Android TV ISO except system.sfs file. I repeat, skip this system.sfs file, which is a larger file than others. Boot Partition done. Now we have to copy this system.sfs file to our data partition, which we labeled as ATV13. Copy or drag and drop this file to data partition. It's done. Now here is the most important step. We have to extract and copy one of the data.img file. Download these files from description of this video. This file will act as a storage drive and all the settings and app data will be stored in this file. If you miss this step, no settings will be saved and Android TV will start from the beginning every time you reboot. Extract one of these according to your storage. I have enough storage and should be using a 64GB data.img file, but to save time, I'm using this 4GB file for demonstration. Now everything is done and ready. We have permanently installed Android TV 13 on our hard disk. 
The same method applies to SSDs and external drives. Let's restart to boot from this drive. Now press boot menu key repeatedly, which is in my case, is F9. Select the drive where we installed Android TV 13. In my case, it's Toshiba drive in UEFI menu. Now select any kernel you want. Usually first one works for me smoothly. If you have a notebook or laptop with an external display, select a kernel with external display option. Select your language and hit enter. Skip this step. Now connect to your Wi-Fi. Here sign in with your Google account to enjoy Google Play Store and services. Accept the terms. And that's it. We've now permanently installed Android TV 13 on the HDD. You can enjoy streaming, light gaming, and the full smart TV experience directly on your PC setup. Let's quickly install some apps on our brand new Android TV 13 setup. After that, we restarted to test if our settings and apps are preserved or not. Quick setup done, now restarting. You can see, after reboot, all apps and settings are preserved successfully. Before we wrap up, let's go through some frequently asked questions and issues you might face. First of all, keep in mind that this build is not an official Google release. It's a community build created by independent developers, so some hardware may not be fully supported. Sound is not working. Some audio chipsets are not fully supported on Android TV x86, which may cause no sound. If that's the case, unfortunately, there's no universal fix. You can try using an external USB sound card as a workaround. Bluetooth not working. Built-in Bluetooth adapters often don't work. A compatible USB Bluetooth dongle usually solves this issue. Netflix not found in Play Store. This happens because the system isn't Widevine certified. You can still try Netflix in a browser, and it should work normally. Another option is sideloading the Netflix APK, but keep in mind HD playback may not work. System not booting. If your system doesn't boot after install, make sure boot partition is set to active 
check your BIOS settings. Disable Secure Boot, switch between UEFI or Legacy Boot modes, or reinstall Android TV with GPT Partition Scheme. System stuck at console hashtag. This usually happens when your CPU does not support the SSE 4.2 instruction set. Sadly, if your processor doesn't have this, this build won't work. Wi-Fi not detected. Your Wi-Fi chipset may not be supported. In that case, you can use an external USB Wi-Fi dongle or just stick with Ethernet. Favorite streaming app not found in Play Store. Some streaming apps like Disney+, Plus, Hulu, or Prime Video may not appear in the Play Store because they aren't available in all regions. If that happens, you can sideload the APK or just use the browser to watch. So, these are the most common issues and their fixes. Hopefully, this saves you some time and frustration. All right, congratulations you've successfully installed Android TV 13 permanently on your hard drive. A huge shout out again to the original project developers, Bruno and Tulio Domingos, for their hard work and dedication. I've linked their website and YouTube channel in the description. Make sure to check them out and show some support. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel ITCPK for more tutorials like this. I'll also leave my affiliate links in the description. If you're planning to download or purchase tools like Minitool Partition Wizard or other software, please consider using those links. It really helps support the channel at no extra cost to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, happy experimenting with Android TV 13x86.